Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Adora Salido here. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe. And also don't forget to, you know, like and comment. Um, yeah, so like I said in my last, in my last video, the one before, I said I was going to be talking about my NYSC experience so today i'm going to be telling you about my nysc experience particularly my camp experience yes i stayed in camp for three weeks and i'm going to be telling you some of the things that happened in camp and some tips that i have um for those of you that are maybe going on to do your nysc and wanting to go to camp with everything going on right now, I'm not sure if the camps are still open or they're still taking on people um, at camp or not. But if they are, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my tips, some stories that I have from camp. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to be uh, telling you a couple of things that you should definitely, definitely pack when you're going to camp. Because I feel like when you look online, you see a lot of different lists and things telling you what to pack but there's some things that I took that I was so 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 grateful for when I eventually got to camp. So first things first before camp the one pre preparation that I did was I went and got my hair braided uh, because a lot of people kept telling me horror stories of like you know getting into mud getting in with wigs and weaves and all that and I just didn't want to deal with that so I went I got my hair braided and I made sure I had all my documents. I think I did like eight copies of everything just to have copies upon copies upon copies. Um, get your health check done, get all of those things done. Um, and I think that was it uh, before I actually went to camp. And oh, and another thing was I didn't buy too many things. I bought things that I needed in terms of like my like uh, clothes, like the white top and white shorts. Um, toiletries things like that but in terms of uh, padlocks buckets all those things that you will need when you get into camp you don't need to buy it beforehand so you're not carrying so many things there is a market in camp called mummy market that was like my hangout spot i love that place <laughs> so that's the market where you'll find everything that you actually need whilst you're in camp so you don't end up carrying a load of things because on the first day when you get there you're going to have to carry all your things around with you you're going to have to be lugging around your suitcase with you know extra bits and bobs so you don't want that hassle at all trust me it is so much better to be over prepared than under prepared and even i felt like i was over prepared but nothing could have prepared me for what um camp was like but yeah so day one arriving just be ready to walk be ready to be going from this place to that place to filling out forms filling out the same forms you filled online getting your documents checks queuing up carrying your suitcase around you know all of that uh it was just chaos i just remember getting there on day one and it was absolute chaos from the people checking the suitcase at the gate to when you go in to um, get a room or even like going to get your forms done it was just chaos and no one was telling anyone where to go next or what to do first so you were just kind of looking around and trying to hope that somebody would help you or ask people and someone will tell you go there you get there they tell you no you haven't done this so you have to go back and go here and go oh my god i was so overwhelmed like i came in like a black um like a black outfit it was like dusty by the time i was done with the day so yeah there's so many stations where you have to get your documents checked again you have to uh, do photocopies get things scanned get things uh stapled all of that and then getting your uniform is just chaos again <laughs> Uh, so you basically get allocated your platoon number at some point. I was in platoon five. I took that as a lucky sign because five is uh, one of my favorite numbers. So I felt quite lucky for that. I remember going in and luckily getting my kit. And I mean the cloak that I didn't really try on the t-shirt and the shorts because I had packed uh, some before. So I didn't really try them on. But luckily for me, the boots, the ugly um, orange boots that you have to have and the khaki which is um, like a green uh, khaki uniform that you also have to have they actually both fit which I was quite fortunate about 
but don't be stressed if they don't fit because with the khakis you can actually go and get them altered at the market and with the boots if they're too big or too small you can swap with people i mean mine were a little bit big they were size seven i'm a five and a half six but it didn't matter because i was only going to be wearing it once in a while like i think i wore it maybe four times total so for me it didn't really matter but there were people there that were asking are you a size 11 i'm a size 11 does anyone have a size 11 i have a size this and so it's pretty easy to just swap if anything doesn't fit but one tip that i would say is do not arrive on day one that was the mistake i made so a lot of the advice that i got was saying you know get there on the first day um so you can get the best room all of that all of that it did not work for me because i arrived really early in the day but what they had done was they started filling up the older rooms first and then leaving the newer rooms unoccupied until more people came which i don't really understand so i arrived early i got given one of the older rooms um and yeah but with the rooms i was quite fortunate because um, it's basically like a key system so as you come they put you in a room there's a room of like 40 people um, with like bunk beds um, so it'd be like 20 beds and then like bunk beds so it'd be like 40 people so as you come you just pick your bed but by the time I came they were starting on a, uh, they're starting a new room so I was the first one in the next room so I got to pick the bed that I wanted I went with bottom bunk because I'm too scared to be climbing up there so I picked the bottom bunk and I picked one that was kind of close to the door and close to a window because I needed to be able to leave the room in case I needed to. I didn't want to be walking past everyone if I needed to get out of the room. And I liked the window because it was, you know, cross ventilation and all that. Um, so for me, that was kind of great um, and very, very fortunate for me. So yeah, my tip, don't come on the first day because from... I arrived, I think maybe on a Thursday. On Friday, there were still people arriving and all that but i was already in my white top and white shorts and marching in the sun whilst people were still arriving so i wish i'd gotten that extra day or two to kind of not have to march and not have to be under the sun but hey another thing i would definitely recommend is to meet as many people as possible and make as many friends as possible i moving back to nigeria i knew like one person when I was moving back but a lot of my friends throughout the year were people that I had met in camp. I remember in camp I was kind of wandering around aimlessly by myself wondering what to do next and my friend Christine <laughs> I'm so grateful for that she just walked up to me and she was like oh hey blah blah, blah. and then we just started talking and um yeah she became one of my closest friends throughout the year and then through like we just met other people and created our own little group and yeah I loved uh meeting new people in camp i would also advise to join all the whatsapp groups i know they're very very annoying but like i joined my platoon group join all the random whatsapp groups that they kind of add you not the really stupid ones but i'm talking about the ones that like your platoon group or like the camp group and things like that because i feel like a lot of information was shared there and because there was a general lack of information by um the authority there i felt like i was getting a lot of my information from the whatsapp group so for me that made things so much easier so yeah join the whatsapp group they're not mute it but every now and again just go in and look and think okay oh i need to go sign the book of life okay let me do that today do you get what i mean just sign up <laughs> sundays were the absolute best days in camp because it was the only day you got to sleep in every other day people would wake up at well the alarm would go off at 4 30 like the trumpets will start you know ringing at 4 30 and then that's when they'll start trying to chase people out of the rooms but for me what i found worked for me was actually waking up at 2 a.m <laughs> i'll explain why so i would wake up at 2 a.m go to the showers because the showers were not working so it was basically an open space um that you had to go shower in and i like to be by myself i didn't want anyone around and i wanted to i wanted to shower when it was still kind of clean so i would go in at 2 a.m shower get dressed maybe i would wear my white t-shirt um and then just get back into bed and just kind of lie down there so by that time it'd be like half two um 
or it depends like, you can wake up at half two and then by then it's like three and then just go back to bed when everyone starts waking up around four and rushing and everyone is trying to get ready at the same time you're already dressed and you're ready to go and you're just waiting for the trumpets or whatever so you can get out just put your shoes on and get out basically so back to what i was saying about sundays being the best day of the week you got to sleep in and that was amazing for me because waking up at 2 a.m every day but going to bed at 10 was so it was just too much for me um so yeah it was great to be able to sleep in it was great to get that day off i think i woke up at 7 a.m on sundays which was such a luxury and you couldn't get people uh, family come and visit um so that was great Finally, I would say just stay really positive. I think maybe I was a bit optimistic about the experience and I just kind of looked at it as an experience. So I, as hard and as difficult as it was, I feel like I just kind of stayed positive throughout the whole experience. I remember on the first day, a friend of mine, she was just ranting and complaining. I was like, no, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be great. <laughs> she was looking at me like I was crazy. And I think because I'd already come in thinking, oh yeah, no, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. As the weeks went on and it wasn't great, I couldn't really go back and be like, oh my God, I'm suffering. I can't do this. I think I'm just stubborn. But I was just kind of like, yeah. When everyone's like, how's it going? What's going on? I'm like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, just stay positive. It only lasts three weeks. Those three weeks drag on. But by the time you're done, you realise it was actually a very very short experience and you're back into the real world pretty quickly so like i said i was going to be telling you guys three things that you would need to survive in camp one protein bars or breakfast bars i never went to eat in the morning because i kind of wanted to go back to bed so you get about an hour break i would recommend well what i did was i had some um like protein bars so i would go back to my room when we got that hour break eat the protein bar and go back to bed whilst everyone else was going to go get breakfast because i, I don't function without sleep <laughs> second thing i would recommend would be uh eye masks and ear pot uh ear um plugs so being in a room with 40 people is it's not the easiest to keep the noise out especially if you want to nap during the day or if you want to sleep at night i remember the girl up who's at the bunk bed the girl above my bed she was always praying at odd hours like midnight 1 a.m she was you know speaking in tongues and all that and i'm not going to stop anybody from praying but for me i just wanted to go to sleep so <laughs> it was very annoying for me and i wish i had um earplugs and the person next to me was always on the phone during the day when I was trying to nap, get that one hour nap in. She was always on the phone to her boyfriend. So it was, it was a lot, you know, <laughs> the combination of the two was a lot. And I definitely wish I got um, earplugs. Final thing I would recommend are energy drinks. Um, during one of the Sundays when someone came to visit me, I told my auntie to get um energy drinks because i was always tired from marching in the sun for hours to not getting enough sleep i felt like i was always always tired and i always needed an energy drink to pick me up so yeah those are three things that i feel like really <laughs> helped my experience in camp there's so many other things you need but there's so many lists on lists online and yeah so that is it that is everything about my nyc camp experience i might do another video on nyc year in general so talking about you know uh cds and all the other aspects of the year getting your um ppa all of that um maybe like this video if you want a part two of this um and i could also you know talk about some of the funny stories and weird things that happened in camp anyway that's everything for now i hope you enjoyed that don't forget to leave a comment below like this video and subscribe and yeah i will see you in my next video